Welcome to Electro Online. Now to get a better feel for what a quantum mechanical oscillator is, we're going to compare it to a classical mechanical oscillator. After all, for quantum mechanic equations to be correct, they must match the classical mechanic equations. So again, we take our carbon monoxide molecule, and in the previous videos, we understood that the spring constant of that molecule was 1926 newtons per meter, and the amplitude at the zero energy level, at the quantum mechanics state zero, n equals zero, was 4.7 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. We also figured out the reduced mass at 1.146 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms, and the oscillation frequency was 4.1 times 10 to 14 per second. This is radians per second, not oscillations per second. Well, we know that for any oscillator in the classical mechanical sense, we know that the position as a function of time can be expressed as the amplitude times the sine or the cosine, doesn't matter, times of omega t. If we then take the derivative of that, the velocity, the derivative of the position, we get a omega times the cosine of omega t, and then if we take the derivative again, the second derivative of a position or the first derivative of velocity, we get minus a omega squared times the sine of omega t. In other words, this here gives us the maximum amplitude of the oscillation of an oscillator. So in this case, a max is equal to a times omega squared. If we then plug in what we know, we know the max, the amplitude of the oscillator when we are at the energy zero state, and we know the frequency, so if we, multiply, if we square that and multiply times the amplitude, we get the maximum acceleration of the quantum mechanical oscillator of 7.96 times 10 to the 17 meters per second squared. Now what we're going to do is realize that using Newton's second law, F equals ma, and using the spring constant, we know that the force of a spring is equal to k times x, and the maximum force is experienced at the maximum amplitude. The maximum force on the spring, in this case it would be the, of course, uh, intermolecular forces, k times the maximum amplitude. And of course, if we calculate the force in both cases, we should get the same result. So here, f equals ma, we plug in the reduced mass, we find the acceleration here that came from over here, and then multiply that, we have a force, the maximum force between the two atoms at the maximum amplitude of 9.12 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons. Now if we use the spring constant times the amplitude, we get the spring constant of 1926, right here, newtons per meter, the maximum amplitude, when we multiply that, we get the very same result. So the maximum force experienced because the maximum acceleration gives us the same result as the maximum force experienced when we pull the spring back spring, of course, the intermolecular forces, to the maximum amplitude of the oscillation, which shows that even the quantum mechanic oscillator follows all the same rules and regulations of Newton's second law, the spring constant of a classical mechanical oscillator as well. So you can see that everything seems to work out, and we have the right values for the oscillation amplitudes, the various energy levels, and as a percentage of the total distance between the atoms, we now have a good feel of what a quantum mechanic oscillator looks like. That's how we do it.